you know, and I mean, that's, that's just kind of a little, so your brain is very good at doing things in your subconscious. So you have this molecular level memory, you've got all this data coming at you through your senses. Here's an interesting thing. Here's why we're not in a simulation. <laughs> Ooh, taking the word, you've done this like three times today, taking the words out of my mouth. Oh, right. Or I why, gotta get Riz Verk next. Or why? Or why? But why biology is not computable? Let's just imagine that our. Let's just let's just assume that biology is pretty good at putting memories in our in our brains, and our, the memories are at pretty much a molecular resolution. That means there's individual atoms in my brain that you know I access. I remember when I remember you know when I blew up okay, my train yeah. set and things like this. Yeah. These are molecules in my brain. I have memories in my brain. These are molecules. Yes. Okay. Now, probably every time I replay that memory, it destroys the molecule. I have to remake it again. So maybe the train is a bit changed in color and shape and shit, right? But I did connect it to the mains. That thing, that thing. As long is, as that's it, true, if it's it, not, it, you're out of here. <laughs> yeah, how do we, how do we validate that? <laughs> um, uh, I think my mother would still we'll call it We'll use AI and find a way. But anyway, so, um, but let's say my brain is storing stuff at molecular resolution, like atomic resolution. It, to build a computer that can be atomic resolution, I don't know any physics that can do that. So my brain is already beating what lithography can do, number yes. one. And I am sensing the environment in an analog way. Yes, I'm using quantum mechanics. There are, there are, there are digital-like things happening. But I'm sampling the environment. I've got infinite amount of data I can get. I've got this almost this infinite memory capacity, or I've got a molecular level memory capacity, and I've got all this data I can get. I can't build a computer big enough. Hmm. That's one problem. And because I'm then moving in time, and each time I'm getting more and more data, because I'm not just like, um, it's not, my memories aren't just isolated in one layer. I'm rebuilding them on my neural network. I'm compressing them. Yes. I'm constantly compressing. So yes, I'm doing what LLMs are doing, if you want to some degree. Yes, I'm doing all this stuff, but it's hyper. Like I'm, I'm able to do this across all modes, right? Language is not intelligence. It's not? No. Language, uh, is, language is just a small subset. Like instinct is the- Oh, on uh, its own. You're you know, it, like okay, instinct. Yes. yes. You know, when people think that they kind of like, they don't want to fight or fuck or, or you know, or, or eat, eat, right? The thing, the instinct isn't playing because what Berkson said, actually, I like it a lot because instinct- going into cognition gives you intuition. Intuition is the thing that you can't yet put into language very well. You haven't got there, mm. it, yeah, but you've got this thing, right? It's like this, again, if you're making music or you're doing art or you're doing math. I One of the reasons I was in the, in the stupid class for math is I never wrote any math down. I could do, I was quite good at combinatorial math. I was quite good at algebra, but I did it all in my head. Mm. And I knew when it was right because I got emotional. You got emotional. Yeah, when I do when I do math now, I'm no, I uh, it's very emotional. So I like it's kind of weird. Like everyone's like, "You're sad." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm just working on something." And they're like, "What?" I was like, "I think so." It's a, it could be different emotions. You're saying. Yeah, yeah. So basically, when I'm pretty, uh, I mean, I'm not. I f I feel my mathematics emotionally. So when I'm solving a problem, I get quite. It's quite. It's almost like a depression episode. But mm. I'm like, oh, I'm solving the problem. And then I have to wait for my subconscious to give me the problem. I it don't, makes sense. It's like a musician writing but it's a great song. Bat shit, it's right? doing it. It's batshit and it's annoying because I look like a complete idiot to everybody because they're like, Lee doesn't know what he's talking about. You know what? Oh, there's the equation. Okay. Huh. Hmm. You know, and I mean, that's, that's just kind of a little... So your brain is very good at doing things in your subconscious. So you have this molecular level memory. You've got all this data coming at you through your senses. You have emotions which tell you, which tell you when emotions help you understand your expectation values. When things that you weren't expecting happen and they're good, you have positive emotions. When things you weren't expecting are bad, you have negative emotions. Right. You know, and it's about your environment, the information. So th this is why the brain is not simulatable on a computer. And this is also why reality is not simulatable in a, on a computer okay. either, because the resource required. So there's two problems. The first of all, the resource required is enormous. And the second problem is like, well, what is the, what is the layer on which the, the, the um, simulation is instantiated upon? Where is the simulation for the simulation? And then it becomes an infinite regression. 
or infinite regress. But they could attempt, and, and Riz talked about this, like the computing power you would need. They could it's, go to new layers. It's that nonsense we can't conceive. because it's not falsifiable. And if it's not falsifiable, it's not science. We're into religion. The simulation hypothesis is a religious hypothesis. Well, wouldn't it be falsifiable if there were proof that the multiverse exists? If we could, if we could develop proof of that, couldn't it now become no. hypothetical? I don't even know how that how that segues in there, but no, 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 no. Here's how. All right, so. Like Brian Keating was spending his life trying to find whether or not the universe was inflationary. Famously, it was not something that he thought he was actually looking at. It turned out to be like universal dust. But if he had proven that the universe was inflationary, he could therefore most likely prove that there is a multiverse that exists. So when I well, say... No, no, we don't, that, that, that doesn't follow. That's just... Why doesn't He that was follow? just making that up to sound good. I mean, like... like that, Brian, like, where does that come from? Sorry, Brian. I mean, like... Please do tell. Yeah, yeah. It's like... <laughs> so, look, so I think David Deutsch gives a really good reason for why the multiverse can not can exist, right? David Deutsch... So, for me, I, I have one argument with David. It's the same argument. Like, the problem is David's disciples don't really understand it. David does. Basically, the universe either has time or it has the multiverse. If you have time, if time, if time is fundamental, you don't need the multiverse. Okay. All right. Why? Well, because basically the multiverse is like everything present everywhere all at once. And you just take a line through that multiverse, yes. right? It's so like it, right now there could be a dinosaur walking through this room on a different transition. Yeah, and, but, um, but, it, you, but the reason for the whole, the ontology that created the multiverse was this requirement that you have the Schrodinger equation. Yes. The wave function describes the universe. It doesn't describe the universe. It is the universe. Right, so that's what, what that's what the hard quantum mechanics. Is it doesn't saying. describe the universe. It is. It, it the is the universe. It's a bit. So, so what I'm saying is like quantum mechanics at the base. It isn't doesn't just describe everything. It is right. It's like the branches of the wave function are, are how reality works. Travel. Okay. It's yeah, something like this. But it's just a. It's a non. It's a construct without. You know. It's, there is no real experimental evidence for it beyond some of the things that David says which are quite nice, which allow it to be falsifiable. I don't know what Brian's saying. Brian might be adopting some of that, but no, but the thing is, you know... There's a deeper explanation to that, by the way. I'm taking the more simplistic view of what Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know what saying. Brian says. I like Brian a lot. It's great. And I think he likes to play on the mystery, right? And it's great. But at the end of the day, we need to encourage people to think critically. I've said a lot of things to you, which, are, which I will happily argue with people. I have strong opinions on. I'll bet you will. But they're weakly held. Yes. And when someone says, no, you're wrongly because okay. of this, I'm like, ah, yeah, thanks. Because by, by one of the reasons I like to say what I think, right, um, openly and honestly, and hopefully in, with a degree of professionalism, is like, you know, maybe Jeffrey Hinton hears that I say he's just making stuff up. I said, no, I'm not making stuff up, and here's why I think it. And I'm like, okay, but then why are you dramatizing this and saying, oh, I left Google because it was – it was too scary and they weren't doing this. I'm like, mm. no, you were just being sassy. And it's cool. <laughs> you know, being sassy is fine. We're all sassy occasionally. Yeah. But I think we have to be principled about it. We have to, the un what I really want to happen to humanity is I want the IQ of humanity to go up and up and up. The critical IQ of humanity. What I mean by that is people are willing and able and, and congratulated for questioning with, in a principled way, why something works and not being fed nonsensical stuff and then being exploited on their woo woo ness, right? The, you know, which is easy to happen these days. It is. And well, no, it's like anything. Like when the printing press, the te I'm so excited about AI and the internet and all the technologies we have because in 100 years, when we've ironed out this cultural shift, we're going to be able to do great, th even greater things with it than we can now. I think when the printing press started, I can't just imagine what it was like. We had mm -hmm. the printing press, and then we did is we printed the Bible. We just gave everyone the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's like, but can we not write a Bible? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, thanks for that. This is great, this technology, Bible. So it, that's what we're doing right now with the internet mm -hmm. and then AI. It's like, we can have this, you know, nonsense. And so I think that- Interesting. You know, that's where we are. It's a fascinating time to be alive. Thank you guys for checking out this clip. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the like button on this video. It is a huge, huge help. And if you'd like to check out this clip's full podcast episode, that link is in the description below or right here. And finally, you can follow me on Instagram and X by using the links in my description below.